A federal program is undermining some of the toughest restrictions on asset forfeiture, but states can easily put an end to it. Civil asset forfeiture lets law enforcement seize and sell property that they assert has been involved in criminal activity. They essentially charge the property with involvement in a crime, and police can take your money and even sell your car, home, or other valuables without ever charging you with a crime. Over the past few years, there has been a strong movement to reform these asset forfeiture programs at the state level. Most efforts change the standard and require a criminal conviction before police can proceed with forfeiture. This is a great step forward. But all too often, a massive federal loophole exists, and it allows or even encourages state and local police to use the federal government to bypass the state laws. Here's how the federal loophole works. Let's say police pull over a car and find $10,000 in cash. They don't find drugs, but suspect it's drug-related, so they take the money. If state law is good on forfeiture, police can't keep the money without an actual conviction. So they will simply claim the case is a federal issue, allowing them to hand it off to a federal agency. This opens the door to a program known as the Federal Equitable Sharing Program, and the police then get to keep as much as 80% of the forfeiture, with only about 20% going to the federal agency. States can easily shut this process down by making sure asset forfeiture reform bills include language expressly prohibiting state and local law enforcement from passing off cases to the federal government to bypass state laws. That forces police to complete forfeiture under the more stringent state law and cuts the feds completely out of the loop.